Hi everyone. This is Prashant Parthiban. Today I'm going to take a short training about surety bonds in property and casualty insurance. Before looking at what is surety bond, let's recap how the property and casualty insurance works. Say if you want a homeowners policy, like you go to an insurance company and you get a policy. So if you see here, only there are two parties involved in the contract. One is the insured, myself, and the insurance company. It can be State Farm or Farmers Insurance. Whereas when you talk about surety bond, there are three parties involved in the contract. Let's see why. So if you see this diagram, the right side, we have a role called obligee. We have a role called principal. We have a role called surety. Let's explain. What are these three concepts? By taking an example, say we have a restaurant owner who wants to start a restaurant business. Now he needs to build a new building in a hot area where the business can be or the customers are more. Now the restaurant owner do not have a required expertise in building a new construction, so he goes to a contractor, building contractor, who can help the restaurant owner. to build a new building based on the requirements given by the restaurant owner now when they do that they get into a contract right so the restaurant owner who wants to build a new restaurant gets in contact with the contractor and gives all his requirement and they come to a contract now happy part is everything goes well the contractor completes it on time and the restaurant owner is happy so we are good but sometimes the contractor cannot complete this work as per the contract what happens in those scenarios that's where the surety bond comes into play so every time when the contract is signed between the restaurant owner and the building contractor the restaurant owner makes sure that the contractor building contractor gets some kind of surety bond that's by name itself you can see a kind of surety that tells the contractor building contractor is going to complete its work as per the contract with, that is established between the restaurant owner and contractor if the contractor cannot you know fulfill his promises then what happens is this restaurant owner can file a claim for that particular surety bond when they file a claim it goes to the insurance company so indirectly there is a contract between the insurance company and the contractor so that's the reason why we have three parties here now one thing to notice unlike the insurance company say you insured pays monthly premium and if something happens the insurer makes a payment to the insured in surety bond what happens say if the contractor does not complete his work as per the contract and the restaurant owner files a claim the insurance company is going to make a payment if the claim is legitimate once they make a payment they come back to the contractor and reclaims that amount the reason is the goal here is for the contractor to complete his work under person and if he kind of no does not fulfill his obligations then the insurance company is going to make a payment and then reclaim the amount from the contractor to have this contract between principal and surety company insurance company the contractor has to pay a monthly premium that's how the surety bonds works the core takeaway is insurance company there are two person involved in the contract two entities whereas in the surety bond there are three roles like obligee who is the kind of person who wants to build something or no runs their own business a principal who helps the obligee to kind of run their business either by building a building or by doing any kind of support role and the surety who give surety to the obligee that in case if the principal does not complete their work as per the promise they will pay the required payment amount claim amount now as i told you there are multiple types of surety bond right like now so there are contract surety bond commercial surety bond court surety bond fidelity surety bond like i'm not going to touch each and everything in detail A high level we can discuss what they are so if you take contract surety bond they are mainly for the construction business say a typical example as we have seen in the previous slide 
the restaurant owner has to build a new building and he can get bidding from multiple contractors for some reason after choosing a particular contractor if he backs out then this bidding bond will help come into play and then make the required prime payment to the obligee performance bond like if the contractor who is a principal does not kind of complete his work as per the contract performance wise then this performance bond will help the obligee where the surety company will repay the required amount and then claim it from the principal payment bond the goal here is every time when there is a contract established between the contractor and the restaurant owner the contractor has to take ownership of paying the subcontractors if that doesn't happen for some reason the payment bond will be used maintenance if you build a building it is the goal or the you know ownership of the contractor to make sure that his work is satisfactory even after he left the contract for certain number of months or days so in that case if it is not done the maintenance bond comes into play second type is anything like you know commercial like you know say every time if i want to run my business i wanted a license or permit from the government organization the goal here is i'm getting the license provided i have required expertise if i do not satisfy the required expertise if i do not do my actual work then this bond comes into play and then the surety company can require make a required payments you have seen some examples here like mortgage broker the has to be a mortgage broker in its license if he does not kind of you no know, perform his work as per the you no know, laws and regulations then this mortgage broker bond come come into play auto dealer warehouse everything works the same way if they not you no know, work as per the licensed laws and regulations then we use this bonds court bond right say if there are two parties who are involved in the conflict litigation and uh, they can have this kind of bonds to make sure cost bond administrator bond and it each have its own no significance i'm not going to go in detail just this is more of high level and fidelity bond is say if i have a company where the employees are involved in handling the cash or some you no know, high high highly you know priced items then we use this surety bond like you no know, so it has business services or employee dishonesty bond so pretty much the goal here is we use surety bond to make sure that if that particular contract is not completed on time as per the contract then the surety company play, comes into play the surety is nothing but the insurance company and they make a payment based on the premium that they get from principal and as i told you the goal here is not to have any kind of loss because the principal is going to complete his work on time for unforeseen reasons if they don't complete their work on time then the surety comes into play the core difference between insurance company and the surety bond is it's a two party contract here it's a three party contract i hope you like my training videos if you like my training videos do subscribe to my youtube channel have a great day Bye-bye.